I'm finally having some luck with uh, detecting gamma radiation using common, you know, junk box kind of variety uh, photodiodes. As you can see here, the uh, the yellow waveform is the output of the uh, the amplifier for the photodiode signal. The uh, the blue waveform is uh, monostable. It's just essentially you know level detecting the the impulses and um, producing a click for human um, ears to detect and also to drive a lead uh, on the circuit that I'll show you in a minute. The one thing you can note is the amplitude of the pulses vary. Um, I'm not sure if this is because we're actually seeing energy differentiation based on um, you know the wavelength or the, the energy of the photons or if it's just because the photons pass through more or less silicon depending on their exact trajectory through the detector. I'm going to have to build a um, an MCA of some description um, to you know, stretch the pulses, detect them, and then uh, use a, an ADC to read them into some kind of digital format that I can then um, discriminate with the PC and put into bins, etc. But this is far more uh, far more heartening than what I've been. Uh, well, let's just say I've had a heck of a lot of trouble getting this to work. I've spent uh, quite a bit of time with noisy circuits and um, yeah, noisy electronics, light leaks, you name it. But uh, finally the thing is detecting gamma radiation quite uh, yeah, with, with fair sensitivity. I mean, we're probably getting, what, two counts per second here. Admittedly, it is a fairly hot source. This is a little piece of uh, little piece of thoria, a little pebble. Um, it's got, on a Geiger counter, it's probably, I don't know, 20,000 counts per minute. So I guess uh, you could say this is several orders of magnitude less sensitive than a Geiger counter, but if it is doing uh, energy leveling, energy de level detection, then it's uh, it's far more useful because it could potentially be a, a spectroscope. Alrighty, let's uh, look at the actual circuit. Okay, this here is just the uh, monostable pulse stretcher in the piezo that's clicking away. Here is the, uh, the Thoria rock. If you see if I take it away from the detector, no more clicks. It's, uh, it's a reasonably sized little pebble. Uh, it's probably got uranium and, uh, and a whole bunch of you know, matrix that doesn't actually produce much radioactivity. For, for comparison purposes, let's have a look at it with an a, uh, N-window Geiger tube. That's not terribly surprising. A Geiger detector is uh, it's quite a bit more sensitive than the solid state detector. So there's a little uh, hole here that I punched in the tin. I put a little bit of alfoil over it just to keep the light out. Inside it's, uh, it's quite simple. It's obviously getting upset by the light right now, but it's just saturated. This is the uh, photodiode. It's a uh, couple that uh, actually Charles Wenzel sent me was kind enough to send me a selection of components for these kind of things and he sent me these. It's very very similar to a BPW-34. As a matter of fact I've been trying various photodiodes. This, even these little uh, infrared photodiodes which is the, the same opaque version of the BPW-34 work quite well. As a matter of fact this, this, this device in particular seems to work better than uh, than some of the other devices that I've tried. I think that the die is slightly smaller so there's less capacitance and less noise. This is a simple uh, through transistor amplifier. It's very, very similar to the one that's on um, Burkhard's website. I'll, I'll post the circuit diagrams for everything once I've got it happily working. I'm planning on uh, building it into a small case, maybe a, an, you know, an Eclipse Mint tin or a, an Altoids tin. Problem really is the power supply. You need a few volts to, to bias the, um, the diode nicely. It probably, ideally, at least 9, 12 or higher would be better. I was thinking about some cigarette lighter batteries, uh, you know, to, what are they called? A23 batteries, I think they are. They're 12 volt. You don't need very much current because the, this is, leakage current's about 10 to 50 um, nanoamps in the dark. And the pulses are quite small, but they're very high impedance, so this amplifier is quite high impedance. And you can see it gets rather upset when I touch it. The, um, the background count 
is very very small we're talking one maybe two counts per minute so you can see just sitting here it's not really detecting anything it seems to uh, have an energy level minimum level of about 50 60 kV uh, can only just detect the, the signal from an americium source if I put the americium source right up against it inside the box the, the aluminium foil is actually too much also I tried it with an x-ray beam at, at very low energies and, and had similar problems it will actually count right through the tin plate though with a higher energy source particularly with um, say a cesium source I tried some uh, TG77 tubes which have a, about 0.9 microcuries of uh, cesium in them which works quite well obviously much higher energy 600 odd uh, kV goes right through the tin plate no problems but uh, this little this little thoria rock is a good test for it it's not particularly hot but not particularly weak as well more experiments to come and yeah I will post the circuit diagrams once I've got it all uh, nicely working thanks a lot